Both players ready here in the feature match area. This Gruel Phoenix deck, I'm curious to see how it does because this is a, a pretty nice take on uh, what is kind of a static uh, archetype at the moment. We saw an interesting build last round in the hands of, uh, oh, what's his name? Marshall Arthurs. Marshall Arthurs, that's it. And uh, unfortunately was beaten by Aaron Barrett's burn deck, but I'm curious to see how this Gruel version does. It's very interesting. Getting a look at what appears to be a mulligan to six as Inquis Inquisition targets Zan. See a hand of Sunbaked Canyon, Wooded Foothills, Lava Dart, Monastery Swiss Beer, and two Manamorphos. Interesting take for Grasofsky. He's going to pick one of those Manamorphoses. Yeah, those just cycle, but uh, sometimes they actually do some really powerful stuff. I think Grasofsky probably has a hand with a spot removal spell and just wants Zan to go turn one Swiss Beer and he's just going to kill it. And if he takes the Swiss Fear with a discard spell, then he's probably going to have some dead removal spells along the way. We'll go over to Zan. He's going to play and sacrifice Worded Foothills, fetching to 19. See if he wants to expose that he's on that green splash just yet. Uh, he'll grab a mountain. Yeah, with another fetch lane in hand for the draw for the turn, no real reason to, to show that you are playing another color. Here's Monastery Swift Spear. Both players now at 19 from the attack. Interestingly enough, can also just cast Ren and Six off of Manamorphos, which is nice. Ren and Six also kind of acting like a, a bit of extra damage from those prowess creatures as well. Tapped Stomping Ground. It's land number two for Krasovsky. Means he could have a Fatal Push or a Lightning Bolt. And there's Lightning Bolt on the Swift Spear. Yeah, going to go ahead and main phase Bolt, so no uh, play a bunch of spells in response shenanigans. That Lava Dart hanging out does represent a lot of extra burst from the Swift Spear. Grzowski no, no, knows when to utilize that main phase removal. Another weak draw step for Zan. Picked up another land. Copper Line Gorge will be where he starts his turn. He'll fire off Manamorphos. You make a red red or a red green. With only three copies of Ren and Six, I just make red, red, but I don't know. I guess if you have no spell in hand you want to play, red, green might be the safer pick. Well, either way, he's passing the turn after drawing the card. Definitely need something like Faithless Looting to turn some of these lands into action. Uh, looks like he might even have Phoenix in hand, though, so. Swamp into Liliana for Grosowski. Liliana of the Veil. Going up to four. Zan discards Arid Mesa. Krasovsky discards Scavenging Ooze. Still has one of those Horizon lands in hand. Discarding Scavenging Ooze is interesting. It's possible that Grigovsky hasn't seen the Arclight Phoenix, so doesn't really uh, want to play around it if possible. So yeah, Druin is now casting Faithless Looting. Doesn't feel great against the Liliana of the Veil, vale, having further card disadvantage, but if he can find an Arclight Phoenix here, that could be a big swing in his favor. Yeah, or just uh, a Ren and Six to kind of recoup some of those lost cards by getting lands back. If Grozowski doesn't have a, an Abrupt Decay or an Assassin Trophy for it, a Ren and Six unchecked could be quite problematic. It's like Xander just has a handful of Red burn spells, but with Bolt and Lava Dart, not really looking too appetizing. Lava Dart often an easy discard to Faithless Looting, but that changes a lot when you're facing down Liliana of the Veil. Vale. You have to be a lot more careful with your cards. Right. Xan also getting a little bit flooded this game. Yeah, it's hard to, to say that he's flooded because he's only really drawn, like, four lands. But at the same time, you know, the deck operates on two lands pretty easily. Plays a very low land count with only, I believe, 17. But he might be a little bit higher thanks to the, uh, the Gruul Turfs and stuff. That's going to take me a second to count these. He has quite the spread of different lands. <laughs> he's going to use his turn, putting some burn spells on Liliana. Takes that down. 18. Yeah, but Lava Spike plus Dart does knock off the Liliana. And now Zan basically empty-handed, though. Yeah, just totally out of cards to take care of Liliana. And, ooh, huge follow-up for Grasofsky. It's Tarmogoyf. We have Planeswalker, Creature, Instant, Sorcery, Land. Yeah, at least a 5-6. Missing Artifact, Enchantment, and 
tribal. tribal. <laughs> I really wish they would bring back tribal, honestly. There's a lot of spells that have, that have been played over the years that, like, from Kazatar Care Block, there were a lot of Reveal Dragon cards from your hand to make them better spells. Those absolutely should have been Tribal. Tribal is like a mechanic that I agree, sometimes it feels like it should be around, but I want to say, if memory serves, it's like an 11 on the Storm scale. I think they've announced that they have no interest in going back. Say it draws Manamorphose, makes a red and green off of that. Now Zan here, Resolve Manamorphose only has one card in hand from the draw. Has made red green, so if he draws Ren and Six, he can play it. He's gonna just flash back a Faithless Looting though. Now if he finds a Phoenix off the Looting, he can discard it and then use a Lob Drought out of the graveyard to bring it back. Draws on Lightning on the Looting. First one was Lightning Bolt. Didn't see the second one. It's slightly off camera. Another land, it looks like. Not ideal. A couple white bordered cards. Got to be bolts, if I'm not mistaken. Lightning Bolt, Bloodstained Mire will be discarded. This is the classic case of Zan just drawing one threat and it being dealt with immediately from Grzovsky's side of things. So not a whole lot he can do. He's kind of spinning his wheels too much and... Uh, not really applying any pressure. Kozowski still at 19 life. Zan basically out of cards in hand. Has a Sunbay Canyon on the battlefield that he can pop, but that'll leave him with only uh, two total lands left on the battlefield. And this Tarmogoyf is a significant clock. Inquisition strips the last card from Sayed. It was a lightning bolt, and here's a scavenging ooze. Tarmogoyf knocks Sayed to 12. And when you try to play these long games, we're encountering what I like to call the Tarmogoyf problem for a lot of these mid-range red decks. There's not a lot of cards that cleanly answer the Goyf. Say its primary solution is getting some Arclight Phoenixes going, but that's just not happening this game. Draws the fourth Manamorphos. Looks like it's not going to be enough. He's going to pack it in in the face of two large threats and basically no cards in hand. Jun doing Jun things. Gorsofki up a game over Sayed. Yeah. Zan here, his build of Girl Phoenix should be a little more insulated against these attrition-based decks like Jun, but unfortunately for him, was unable to capitalize uh, on, on the relatively slow start from the Jun deck. They played a Discord spell on one, no threat on two, instead opted to just kill the, the Monster Swift here, but Zan never able to get a foot on the battlefield, never found a Phoenix, only found one total creature. Players going to sideboard here for Grasowski on the Jun side of things. We have four Leyland of the Void, two Plague Engineer, two Fulminator Mage, two Kitchen Finks, an Anger of the Gods, a Surgical Extraction, an Injured Explosives, an Ancient Grudge, and a Collector Oof. All right, starting from the first, Leyland of the Void seems like a no-brainer. The Gruel Phoenix decks, uh, you know, not only do they have Lavadar and Faithless Looting as flashback cards, but they're relying on Arclight Phoenix to, to do a lot of the heavy lifting against the generic spot removal from the Jun deck. Uh, I would expect all four Ley Lines to come in here because it's also pretty good against um, Be uh, Bedlam Reveler. But uh, while Zan only has one copy, Grzowski has to assume there's at least two. So Ley Line does a lot of work here. Uh, Fulminator Mage, not so good. Uh, Kitchen Finks is okay, can buy you a lot of time. Uh, it also, you know, blocks pretty well against a Monster Swiss Spear and forces the Gruul deck to kind of cast a couple of spells in response uh, to the block. Uh, Anger of the Gods might come in to, to take care of Phoenix as well as some of those early one drops. Uh, the Surgical Extraction might come in as well alongside the Ley Lines to give them a little more protection from Phoenix. And uh, that's about it. Sideboard for Sayed, we have a Flame Slash, we have a Seasoned Pyromancer, two Blood Moons, two Shrine of Burning Rage, two Surgical Extraction, three Abrades, and four Leyline of the Void of his own. Now, while Leyline of the Void is really good against Gruul Phoenix, it's not particularly good against Jund because Tarmogoyf checks both graveyards. So if Zan brings in Leyline of the Void, it's not really going to do a whole lot. So I don't expect him to bring those in. Uh, Braid is more of a spot removal spell for small creature decks. Since it doesn't kill Tarmogoyf, I don't think it'll come in either. Uh, Surgical Extraction, kind of a no-go, same as Le Leyline of the Void. Not a whole lot to hit, not a whole lot of graveyard-related synergy from the Jun deck. Shrine of Burning Rage is an interesting one, but I think that one's more for the like Azorius control decks as opposed to Jun. Jun does have a lot of ways to destroy uh, non-land permanents via Assassin's Trophy, as well as Abrupt Decay and Maelstrom Pulse. 
Blood Moon, I think, is going to be a home run. Season Pyromancer is going to be very good as well, allowing him to turn some of those lava darts and such into 1 1s and kind of spread wide against a Liliana of the Veil. And then Flame Slash is often good enough to kill a Tarmogoyf early in the game, but uh, it's just one of the better removal spells against kind of medium sized creatures. For fans of our creature collection, and who doesn't love this stuff? We have another pre release playmat coming out, so it'll be for the pre release of Throne of Eldraine. This is Bombs Awry, an exclusive from the SEG Creature Collection. You know, I heard a, a fun fact the other day. Did you know that uh, El Drain is actually Spanish for <laughs> the drain? I have heard that. Yeah, dude, that's so interesting. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not really that cultured. And whenever you hear cool facts like that. <laughs> now, this Bombs Awry, uh, it looks like an, an homage to, uh, uh, what's the? Uh, Doctor God, Strange Doctor Love. Strange Love, yeah. When uh, the, the cowboy j j drops out of the plane on the bomb. How I, uh, how I learned to stop something and learn to do the other thing. Yeah, how, uh, so, uh, how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. That's the one. Yeah. Ask your local game store if you're already signed up for these Creature Collection exclusive play mats. Go to go.starcygames slash pre-release to find a pre-release location near you that is carrying them. Yeah, we always come out with a really cool special playmat whenever a pre-release comes around. Last time, it was actually uh, some cat Nirvana. I forgot the name of it. Nirvana. But it actually featured my cat, Jaeger. Got the chance to uh, he was the model. meet your cat recently. Yeah. I was in town for the Invitational. It's a good cat. I like Cookie a lot. Cookie's tight. Get, get Cookie on a playmat. Maybe. That's my position. <laughs> Players looking at opening hands for game number two. Sayed pretty quickly dissatisfied with his. Looks like uh, Grzowski is going to go back to the drawing board as well. Both these players here taking a mull of six. Of course, we are using the London mulligan. This new mulligan rule is in effect now permanently. Until, well, I guess semi-permanently. They can change <laughs> it whenever they want. For the foreseeable future. Right. You know, we had the, the Paris mulligan for years and years. Uh, eventually changed that to the Vancouver Mulligan where we did the scry, and uh, now we're doing uh, the London Mulligan where you get to draw seven every single time that you mulligan, and you just put one on the bottom of your deck for each time that you mulligan. Sayed playing this take on Gruel Phoenix. He is one to innovate, and he has done that to a lot of success here on the SCG Tour. The 27 year old from Georgia in 2018 played 18 opens with five top eights and a win all-time 11 top eights with two wins yeah we saw him uh kind of have an explosive last year where he uh i believe made the finals and won in back-to-back -back opens one with spirits and and one with uh another deck that i can't quite recall supreme phantom being his kind of breakout performance last year in that uh spirit strategy an early adopter of supreme phantom definitely paid off for him We'll find out exactly how good this Renin 6 take is on the Arclight Phoenix strategy. I can't imagine it's bad. It's just a nuts card. You know, I wouldn't even be surprised to see, uh, like, some Forgotten Caves or something like that in, at some point. But Renin 6 just plays kind of like a Planeswalker version of Life from the Loam. And so if you're playing, uh, you know, a deck that wants to kill little creatures and doesn't mind getting back some of those Horizon Lands like Fire Islet or Sunbaked Canyon, or even Forgotten Cave. You know, Ren and Six seems like a no-brainer. See, say it starts on 17, using Wooded Foothills for stomping ground. Got in for one with the Swift Spear before Grosowski lightning bolted it down. Let's see if Sayed can apply some additional pressure. Maybe he'll have that turn two Ren and Six. We see him fetching for a second land off of Bloodstained Mire pretty quickly here. Yeah, and there's not a whole lot in his deck that costs two mana, so if it's not a Ren and Six, it's probably a Mana Morpho. going for a big turn here, but... There it is. is. Ren and six. Goes to 16 to cast it. He's going to go ahead and pick up Wooded Foothills. I like to call it Rent and six. Oh, because rent costs money and cards also cost money. Right, and it's just really expensive. <laughs> A place out of Rent and six is like 300 bucks. That's crazy. Inquisition of Kozilek for Grozowski. And you see Zan had some options last turn. Swift Spear, Soul Scar Mage, and Light Up the Stage. 
yeah, along he, with that wooded foothills. He did have some options. Uh, could have deployed two one uh, mana threats. Instead, chose to get the Ren and Six, understanding that making sure that that doesn't get hit with a discard spell is key in this matchup. Now he's going to be able to hit all his land drops. Uh, it's going to give him more fuel if he ever draws Faithful Saluting, allowing him to not only uh, you know cycle through four cards, but also just discard some extra lands that he finds. And you see something that Zan likes about having Ren and Six in the deck. Really easy enabler for light up the stage. Right. Inquisition and takes Kyra's Soul Scar Mage. Where did Foothills go? Now that was a very interesting take from Krasowski there. He chose to take Soul Scar Mage over Monastery Swiss Spear, kind of incentivizing Zan to go ahead and play the Swiss Spear and get attacking. That has to me uh, to signify that Grzowski actually has uh, a removal self for it. There's a couple incentives, right? Removal spell for the Swiss Spear, and also if he just doesn't want the Soul Scar Mage shrinking something like a Tarmogoyf. Those minus one, minus one counters can be a factor. See, Renin Six goes to five, picks up and plays Bloodstained Mire, does say it, fetches to 15. Yeah, he's just going to fetch Mountain here. Three mana. Could be a Blood Moon picked up. He has two of those on the sideboard. Let's see what he's got. Seasoned Pyromancer. Another great three drop. And here, if I'm Xan, I'm pitching uh, at least one spell to get an, an extra 1-1. One, one. It discards the Swift Spear and Wooded Foothills, so it gets an Elemental. Yeah, and he gets to draw two cards off the top. Still draw two, right? Yeah, draw two is part of it, so it looks like we're going to uh, make sure that, that that happens. Yeah, say I did not draw the two cards, but uh, I do not believe that you can ever partially resolve any kind of ability. Right. As long as the game hasn't gone too far, but we're still faction here, so we'll make sure that gets handled by the judge. There we go. This card's a lot worse if you don't draw those cards. <laughs> <laughs> discard two cards. Oh, no. If you discard a spell this way, make a 1-1. One, one. Oh, okay. But also draw two cards. Ah, yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a real roller coaster. If you don't draw the two, the card looks really bad. <laughs> See Gorsovsky cracking a fetch, shocking for an overgrown tomb. Fatal push down the Pyromancer. He's at 16. Land number three for him will be Nurturing Peat Land. Now, this Ren and Six is only a few turns away from going to Ultimate. And I got to say, that emblem from the Ren and Six is quite powerful. And any deck featuring Lightning Bolt just allows you to turn any land you draw into a Bolt. Uh, any land into a Light of the Stage for Retrace sounds pretty nice. Korsovsky deploys a Kitchen Finx, takes the damage to cast it off the Peat Land, gains two life to 17. And we'll see how much damage Sayed can do. The Ren and Six is another one of those cards the Red Deck's happy to have because it makes it easier to engage with the Kitchen Finks. Right. If, uh, if he has like a Lightning Bolt or something to pop the front half of the Kitchen Finks, it comes back as a 2-1. Ren and Six can get rid of the, the back half pretty easily and allow for some attacks. But just going to keep pressing the advantage is Zan. He's going to fetch again. Now has drawn three cards off of Renin Six. Yeah, effectively. You now he might kind of get left with a few lands in hand at the end of the day, but if he finds Faithless Looting or something like that, or just gets the ultimate off, those lands turn into real spells. See him fetch to 14. Four mana at the ready now. Just going to hard cast Arclight Phoenix. Now Zan's going to choose to attack here. I would actually love it if he held it back to block to make sure he gets max protection on. The Ren and Six, because he's so close to hitting ultimate, and it would be such a boon for him if he got that emblem. Yeah, I was curious about that, but he gets busy with the Phoenix, both players at 14. Got to get him dead. I don't blame him for it. I would have just liked to have played a little more defense with that Ren and Six, almost at ultimate status. The Gen deck does have a lot of ways to actually deal with Planeswalkers in general, though, thanks to uh, the kind of, you know, uh, catch-all nature of Assassin's Trophy and things like that. There's some incentive for Saya to keep this Phoenix on the battlefield because you don't know what kind of graveyard heat Gorsovsky's bringing to the table. Sure thing. Trading it in combat and getting hit by scavenging ooze would be kind of a disaster case. I mean, that's fair. And if Gorsovsky throws a removal spell at the uh, elemental token so he deals three to Ren and Sex, that's not a huge deal either. Kitchen Finks attacks Ren, elemental token jumps in front. We'll see what Gorsovsky can do to try to beat this Ren. Here's Scavenging Ooze post-combat. 
see if Zan can find a lightning bolt here and take care of that ooze. I know he still has a light up the stage, so he can go attack with Phoenix, deal three, cast light up the stage for one. Still has either activation of Renin Six at the ready if he needs. So even something like Lava Dart plus a Renin Six minus off of the light of the stage would be enough to clear it. Ooh. Now he's going to start ticking Ren down. He's going to minus one deal of damage to Gorsowski. Turns on Spectacle and light up the stage, which he will cast. Copperline Gorge and Shrine of Burning Rage. That's kind of a miss. Yeah, the Copperline Gorge comes into play tapped, notably. So if he wants to have an untapped land here, then uh, he's going to need to play one from hand. And with the Ren active, you have to imagine that he's kind of flooded right now. Doesn't really need that copper line off the, the light. He'll cast the shrine. Yeah, now every red spell he plays is going to put an extra counter on the shrine, and he also gets counter every upkeep if he remembers the trigger. And then at some point, you can spend three taps, sack it, and deal a huge chunk of damage to Krasovsky if the game goes that long, and if Krasovsky doesn't have an answer to it. Car that plays really well with Lava Dart. Right. He'll play the Copper Line Gorge tapped. And thinking about whether he wants to attack with the Phoenix, now with that scavenging who's on, on the table, blocking even less inviting. We go ahead and attack. Gorsowski down to 10. Yeah, I'm guessing he just doesn't have a way to deal with this ooze, and that's going to put him in a bind. The ooze here is going to eat a creature. Next turn is going to be able to attack for at least four. That's neutral on life because it was activated off nurturing peatland. Right. Now, a game that looked like it was going pretty well for Zan has kind of turned on its head. Blood Saint Meyer, land number four for Gosowski. He'll fetch down to nine. Now, if this is a Bloodbird Elf, that's going to be huge for Gosowski. Allow him to apply a ton of pressure while cleaning up this Ren and Six. Very frequently, that is what four mana means for the Jones strategy. Yeah, he could be double spelling, just fetching up the fourth land, but or even three mana spell plus an activation of Scavenging Ooze or something like that. There are still uh, two more creatures in the grave, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even three more creatures in the grave. So if he wants, he could just activate the Scavenging Ooze multiple times, grow it up to a five. But this Blood Red Elf represents uh, perhaps an insane spell. Oh, there it is. Ooh. Wow. Coligan's Command off the Elf. Wow. So now he can kill Shrine of Burning Rage, make Xan discard a card, or kill Shrine and kill Phoenix. Shock Phoenix, destroy Shrine. Now he's going to send two creatures at Renin 6, probably, just to make sure that the uh, the resources are pretty low in general for for Zan. And then the rest going to go face. So it's three three power attackers, two take down Renin 6, one bump say it to 11. What a hit. There's only one Cole against Command here in the main deck for Grzovski. He found it, and it was brutal. And that's one of the reasons why I thought that Shrine of Burning Rage should probably stay on the sidelines for Zan. This Jun deck has a lot of ways to deal with it, and so you're not going to always get value out of it. I've been playing a lot with these mono red decks, and I see Shrine of Burning Rage in a lot of sideboards. Mm -hmm. And basically every matchup that you want it has some kind of play against it. Sure. But if you ever like get it going for real, it's it's pretty nuts. She said lightning bolting down scavenging ooze. And Shocks here with a stomping ground. He's going to be activating that Season Pyromancer to generate a few blockers more than likely. Shocks to 11 for that. The bolt on the scavenging ooze while Grzowski was tapped out was pretty huge, though. So Grzowski is not looking as good as he was last turn, but he still looks like he's in okay shape. Yeah, the bolt bought him some time. Here's the Liana of the Veil for Grzowski. Now that is going to snag Zan's last card. I believe it's a land. Oh, no, he has two cards in here. Excuse me. One of the lands goes away from the Renin Six, but he still has the Season Pyromancer activation at the ready. Attack for six from Grosowski. This is most of Sayed's life total, so you see him activate that Season Pyromancer from the graveyard. He's going to get two elementals. My guess is both are going to block Bloodbraid Elf, and that's going to clear it. Zan's going to go to six, facing down Liliana and Kitchen Finks with only one card in hand. He's going to need some help off the top. He may choose to soak it and just start getting aggressive with the tokens, especially if he draws something like Bedlam Revelar off the top. 
The Liliana of the Veil is interesting in this game because in a lot of ways, Sayed can just play his card he draws every turn, not care about the discard. But he's also just not getting his Arclight Phoenix back that way. Right. Liliana of the Veil is very strong at keeping the Arclight Phoenix stuck in the graveyard just because you need raw resources for Faithless Looting type effects uh, as well as just you need to play multiple cells in one turn. If you don't have one of those flashback cards, it becomes a lot more difficult. So it's still thinking on these blocks. This could be an opportunity to trade with the front side of Kitchen Finks, and then your one damage effect would take care of that later. Yeah, he's thinking, like, what are the permutations of draws off the top of the deck that ultimately end with Jonathan dying? And there's actually a reasonable amount. If he goes, like, Manamorphose into Faithless Looting or vice versa, uh, including the flashback, he's able to get back Phoenix. Uh, and a bolt somewhere along the way combined with those two um, tokens on the battlefield equals eight damage. So we can then end up trading with the Bloodbraid Elf. The Kitchen Finks knocks it to six. Now, most spells that Xan has, he's going to want to go ahead and use here because he does not have a whole lot going on. Flame Slash takes care of the Kitchen Finks. It'll then persist. Krasovsky up to ten. Ren in six. Can wow, finish nice. it off. It will. That's a, a great turn here from Zan. He's effectively cleared the board uh, from both sides. Grzowski here has a little out of the veil, but it doesn't quite check the Ren 6. Yeah, both players empty-handed. We see Grzowski draw for turn. Still has that nurturing peat land if he wants another look. Plays Virgin Catacombs. He'll use the peat land. Now, from Grzowski, I think I would have liked the plus from Lily before drawing the card, because now if he drew a Bloodbraid Elf, he's not going to be able to tick the Lily out of the Veil up. But he found a nice one off the top in Renin 6, and now he may want to go ahead and just chip the opposing Renin 6 for one. But it might be better to just keep getting back nurturing Pete Land. But important yeah. to note, he has played a land for turn, though. And he'll want to plus the Liana before he uses the Renin 6 if he's going to plus it. Still has not done that. So there it is, Liliana to five, running six to four, probably picking up the peat land. Yeah, it's uh, one of the reasons why these Jun decks are playing a couple copies of Nurturing Peat Land, sometimes playing one copy or two copies of Baron Moor. You just want a little bit of added value from the Renin six, being able to use some of those uh, utility lands. Sayed now starting a turn on very low resources against a player at 10 life. Yeah, and unfortunately for Zan, even though he does play quite a few of those uh, kind of, I guess he only plays two of the Horizon lands. Doesn't have one here for the Renin 6. It's not doing a whole lot for him at the moment other than getting back a land. Now, if he does have Faithless Looting as the draw for turn, he does uh, get to Faithless Looting that into a, a real spell. Lava Dart targeting Renin 6. I believe it's a spike, and then oh, he's going to use right, Renin right. 6 to finish it off, which is huge. That's a big deal. All right, so now it's one Planeswalker each. And you mentioned that Saya doesn't have a Horizon land to pick up. He also notably has all of his fetchable lands on the table. Sure, so now Renin 6 is effectively just going to be put a card in my hand. Uh, to protect from Liliana of the Veil if necessary, or to turn on Faithless Looting a little bit. See Grosowski fetch and sep down to nine. This has been a really back and forth game, and you're really seeing the kind of the upside of Ren and Six in this Gruel Phoenix deck. You know, it's actually able to kind of keep up with the Jun deck as far as uh, longevity is concerned. Here's that Peat Land that'll be sacrificed to draw a card. Not to be confused with the Pete and Pete land. <laughs> what does the Pete and Pete land do? Rosowski accidentally played an extra blood crib. We're going to get that stopped real quick here. He did play the Pete land for the turn and popped it. Blood crib should be in hand. It's innocuous, but so it's good to keep everything in good working order. Yeah. Fairly common mistake when it comes to Horizon lands when you sacrifice them right away, but now corrected. As someone who draws Horizon Canopy and puts it immediately in the graveyard playing humans, it, it happens more often than you think. 
All right, pretty nice draw set for Sayed. He'll plus run in six to pick up one of those useless fetch lands, uses Faithless Looting, trying to clean up the hand a little bit. Yeah, that's a nuts draw from, from Zan. Now he gets to turn that land into a spell. He can flash back Faithless Looting as well. And if he plays one other internal sorcerer after that, he gets back uh, at least one copy of Arclight Phoenix and can pressure the Liliana of the Veil to make sure that it can't ultimate next turn. Given a long think to the discard, one's for sure. It's going to be that Arid Mesa he just picked up. This deck is full of cheap cards, so he's got a lot of room to work here. I think one of the issues might be that uh, maybe he drew a three-mana spell that he doesn't really want to flash back Faithless Looting and discard. Find another Phoenix. That could be huge. If he finds a Lightning Bolt here off the Faithless Looting, that's game. And because of the misstep from Grzowski, he actually knows that the last card in his hand is Blood Crypt. So if he finds Bolt here, the game's over. Yeah, nothing to play around. That last card in hand must be interesting. Yeah, dude, it's, it's got to be like a, a, another season Pyromancer or something. It's got to be really good. But he's going to go for it. He needs to get those Phoenixes back. He needs to find an answer or sorcery here. Found a Manamorphose. That's bringing back two Phoenixes at the very least. Yeah, so it was Season Pyromancer, but as you mentioned, here's that Manamorphose. That's spell number three. Can we find a Bolt? One-time dealer. Shrine of Burning Rage is a good one. Bring yeah. back two Phoenix, put you to three, or kill Lily out of the Veil, or hit Lily for three and attack you for three. Three options here for Zan. Yeah, that extra Phoenix definitely really good find here for Sayed. He attacks down the Liliana of the Veil entirely. Yeah, I don't hate that play. With just Blood Crypt from Brzozowski's side, it's a smart play to just go ahead and check it. Blood Crypt for the turn. Tom goes to find. That's not going to do it. If Zan draws a red card that he can cast here, that combined with the Ren and Six and the attack for Six should be lethal. Shrine to the first counter. Say it, consulting the graveyard here. Yeah, now we got an artifact with Shrine of Burning Rage, so should be a 6 7. Arclight Phoenix. Phoenix off the top. That looks like 9 to me. Bingo, bango, bongo. Going to a game three. What a great sequence from Xan there, finding that Faithless Looting. The Lava Spike on the Ren and Six, though, that's where the game really started to turn around. Zan able to check the opposing Ren and Six, and his left unfettered for a couple turns allowed him to turn that Faithless Looting into two Arclight Phoenixes. And that game, you got to feel good about that one if you're on the Lava Spike side of things. Say it winning a marathon affair against Jun there to even things up after that first cyborg game. Oh, for sure. That was very nice. Very well played as well. We're uh, getting to about, I guess we're still early in Season 2, but Season 2 SCG Tour here, building up to the Invitational coming up at the end of the season. If you want to meet us there at SCG Con Winter and play the Invitational, maybe check out a Star City Games Invitational Qualifier near you. Some great prizes for these events. $1,000 in cash to the top eight. Qualifications for the Invitational to first and second. Pick up some SCG points. Get that top eight playmat and a set of our new personality tokens. Dude, that playmat's insane. Yeah, that's awesome. I want that one. <laughs> no, but I'm going to go. I'm actually going to go to go.sargentgames.com slash IQ. After this round is over, I'm going to find out where an IQ is somewhere in California. Where I'm moving to in a few weeks. That is true. And I'm going to get me one of those Kraken playmats. That is a hell of a playmat. Well, you can pick one up yourself. Go to that same website. Like Todd said, go to srcgames.com slash IQ. The dudes on that boat are screwed. <laughs> I like the way that the uh, the Kraken's head just looks like a rock yeah, in the same. distance. That's yeah. a really cool effect. Yeah. I want to pick your brain about uh, Say It's Sideboard again. We saw two copies of Shrine of Burning Rage show up in game number two, and both of them were Stink City. Yeah, they were not great. Lava Spike would have been better. Uh, but, you know, he does have some mediocre cards in his deck that he wouldn't mind getting out. Gutshot's not particularly good. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a chance that Shrine of Burning Rage ends up doing more damage than something like Lava Spike, or at the very least just requires an answer from the Jun deck and kind of overloads their removal spells on all fronts. You know, Grzowski only has one copy of Colgan's Command. That was the real backbreaker for Xan in that game, but ultimately was able to fight through it. Um, I don't think that they're that bad. I just think that, you know, 
it, you want to keep as many instant sorcerers in your deck as possible so that you're as uh, consistent as possible when it comes to things like Bedlam Reveler and Arclight. Grasowski pretty quickly mulliganing the opening seven here for game number three. Say it will keep. Now this iteration featuring Ren and Six is not as explosive as the version we saw last round with Marshall Arthurs and those ritual effects, but it's a little more longevity in his game plan with three copies of Ren and Six to go along with some of those Horizon lands from Modern Horizons. Yeah, these new takes on the archetype, both pretty interesting. Sayed and Arthur's going a little bit more mid-range. Mm -hmm. Arthur's heavy on season Pyromancer. Sayed going into green for those Ren and Sixes. You got to figure some of that is to combat the popularity of decks like Jun, so you can try to win more of these long games like we saw Sayed do in game number two there. Yeah, and we got 15 minutes to finish this game. Looks like Grzowski is actually mulliganing down to five here. Zan has kept his. And uh, we're going to need some help from Grzowski's side of things to, to take this match down. Zan's got to be feeling pretty good about this double mole because it's going to be a lot about exchanging resources. And with Jund starting on five and the Gruel Phoenix starting on seven, you got to feel good. Yeah. Jund generally not a deck that is thrilled to mulligan. No, but he could be aggressively mulliganing for Leyline and the Void. And that shuts down a lot of stuff from Zan's side of things. Now, it's not nearly as imperative to find Leyline in this matchup uh, as it would be against something like Dredge or the Hogak deck because it's kind of lightly touching the graveyard, and it can still just hard cast Arclight Phoenix, turn into a Snare Thopter. <laughs> we saw that game, he first one he casts on turn four, you know? Yeah. And with Ren and Six and all these fetch lands, Zan's build pretty capable of getting to four mana. Right, for sure. So I'm pretty capable of getting to five mana as well for that uh, activated ability of Season Pyromancer from the graveyard. Krasowski, I believe, planning on keeping this five, looking at what to put on the bottom. He's got to pick two. He's going to be on the play here as well. So down a card kind of in that respect too. Would have loved to have been on the play whenever you mold a five. No beginning of game effects. Shocks for Overgrown Tomb to 18. Yeah, but past his turn, which to me signifies he has a fatal push in hand. So if Zan deploys a creature on turn one, he's going to have a, a spot removal for it, most likely. Couple and Gorge, Soulscar Mage. There's the fatal push. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, Ryan. In, in that regard, in that one specific instance, if you're Zan, is there any way you just don't play the one-drop creature to try to not let Grzowski utilize that mana? Or do you think it's more important for you to utilize your mana early on as opposed to later in the game? Depends on the texture of the hand. I would have been incentivized to wait. It looked like Grzowski was setting up to have a turn to Tarmogoyf. That's what I thought as well. But the fact that he didn't have the Tarmogoyf, uh, maybe he took a, a couple points of damage he didn't really need to. Yeah, it worked out for Zan here. And now, here's turn two Shrine of Burning Rage. This one might be a heater. Yeah, if Grzowski, even if Grzowski kills it, though, that's not that big of a deal for Zan. Most of the ways for Grzowski to kill it give Zan a land and Assassin's Trophy. And we saw uh, in the previous game that he's able to utilize those extra mana sources on things like Flashback Faithless Looting and uh, Season Pyromancer activation. See Grzowski fetching in step with Verdant Canacombs down to 17. Finds a Blood Crypt. See if he can produce that one copy of Coligan's command here. Saiyan's deck, it is pretty lean, relatively light on lands, especially if you don't get Ren and six mana going. So it can be hard to leave up the three mana for the Shrine of Burning Rage. Oh, for sure. And here we see Ren and six for Grosowski, so he shouldn't have any difficulty making land drops. Picks up Verdant Catacombs. Plays that. We'll pass to Sayed. Shrine of Burning Rage gets its first counter. Now, it's interesting to me that you, you said, you know, you might want to hold up the three mana for the Shrine uh, at some point. But if I'm Xan, I'm basically tapping out every turn. And I'm only popping the Shrine of Burning Rage if I'm knocking off a giant Tarmogoyf, taking out a Planeswalker, or finishing the game outright. I'm not going to be sitting on my hands. I'm going to force my opponent to find the answer, and I'm going to be accumulating as many counters as possible as the game goes. Oh, absolutely. And certainly on this turn. You don't need to leave up three mana when it's at one. Right, right. <laughs> Minus Swift Spear, that'll put a second counter on the Shrine. 
Now Zan uh, looks like he has at least one, maybe two Arclight Phoenix in hand. He's definitely looking for something like Faithless Looting. Doesn't look like he has it. Or he's just trying to protect his Phoenixes from something like Surgical Extraction. But what he did have was light up the stage. So Swift Spear Ooh. turns that on. Grosovsky to 16. Light up puts a third copy, third counter on Shrine of Burning Rage. Finds a Lava Dart and Seasoned Pyromancer. Now if he has a land from hand, he can actually dart during uh, Jonathan Grosovsky's turn at some point. Puts an extra counter on Shrine of Burning Rage as well. There is that land, Wooded Foothills. And he will pass turn. Krasowski fetches end step to 15. The Shrine of Burning Rage is going to get up pretty high, pretty fast. It's going to end up putting a lot of pressure on Krasowski if he can't deal with it. But that's kind of the reason why it's in the sideboard and in the deck in this matchup. Because now Zan's just playing normal magic. He, he spent turn two to play Shrine of Burning Rage. And he's just going to play normal magic. And if John, Jonathan Grzowski doesn't deal with it, at some point when Zan's tapped out, it's just going to equate to roughly five to ten points of burn at his dome. Grzowski finds Overgrown Tomb off the fetch. We'll see if he can answer that Shrine. Renin 6 active here for Grzowski. He can get back another land if he so chooses. But really, he's got to deal with these problematic permits on the battlefield. And if he doesn't deal with the stuff that's on the battlefield already, it's going to kind of cascade over time uh, because of uh, the season Pyromancer. Lightning Bolt targets Monastery Swift Spear. Say it could save it if he wanted to. Yeah, I think it costs a little too much. Chooses not to. And I suppose the Renin 6 still finishes it off, even if you go for the full Lava Dart. Very true, very true. So Zan here, very likely going to fetch a mountain, cast Dart on the dome. Put Grzowski to 14, Shrine up to 4, Upkeep goes to 5. Season Pyromancer puts it to 6 and cycles 2 cards from hand. Probably going to be 2 copies of Arclight Phoenix and generating a couple 1-1s one -ones along the way. Yeah, see Zan will fetch up Stomping Ground. Shocks to pull off that Lava Dart end stepped. And the Season Pyromancer is exiled, but it's exiled from a light of the stage, and he has just this turn to cast it, and I fully expect him to do so. Upkeep, Shrine up to five. Say it draws for turn. Hmm. I'm trying to, okay. Here's a, here's a pretty interesting play that Xan can do. Uh, Manamorphose into cast Season Pyromancer, discarding two Phoenixes. And then he can Lava Dart from Graveyard, and if he has any one mana instant or sorcery for red, uh, he can bring back both Phoenixes as well as making two 1-1s one off the Season Pyromancer. And that's, of course, assuming Grozowski doesn't have any sort of anti-Graveyard card. Clears Manamorpho, Shrine to six. Probably just makes red red there. Cast the Pyromancer right away. Shrine up to seven. Double Arc Life Phoenix discarded. Going the way you described so far, here's two elementals. Looked like he missed the draw on Manamorphose. We'll get him that card and then get him two more for the Pyromancer. Yeah, so he gets two tokens off the young or the seasoned Pyromancer, and that's going to give him uh, three three looks here to try to find an insert sorcerer to bring back both Phoenixes, and it looks like he's done it. Yeah, there's Faithless Looting. Shrine up to eight. Or the trigger on the stack. Surgical Extraction targeting Arclight Phoenix for Grosovsky. Now that's a little unfortunate for Zan. He really, really wanted to get those Phoenixes back and that one of Surgical Extraction paying dividends here for Grosovsky. Sees a hand of Manamorphose Copperline Gorge and the resolution of the Surgical. Now he still has the Shrine of Burning Rage, which is currently being sent up to eight counters. He still gets to draw two, discard two. Pitch some extra lands that he has in hand that he found off the Season Pyromancer. And even if Grzowski is able to deal with the Season Pyromancer, Zan has enough lands essentially to, to activate the ability from the graveyard as well. Yeah, so now trying up to eight. You see the Faithless Looting resolving. Discard a Manamorphose Copperline Gorge. Those were the two cards that Grosovsky knew about. 
And at this point, Krasovsky really has to have answer to Shrine of Burning Rage right now. It'll go up to nine naturally next turn. Say it's probably just going to throw that at his face. That's just too much damage to give up on. Yeah, and he still has a dart in the graveyard as well. And he discarded a Mana Morpho, so you have to know that his hand is really good. It's possible it was between Mana Morphos and some innocuous threat. But Grzowski desperately needs an answer. Shrine of Burning Rage here. And you have to know, this is just turn four. Zan got this eight counters on the Shrine of Burning Rage on turn four after casting it on turn three. Or casting on turn two, rather. Red and six takes care of an elemental, but that is all that Grzowski can muster. We see Shrine to nine as we go back to Sayed. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised here if we just see an attack for three. A lava dart from the graveyard, but this looks like it's just enough here. Zan going to send it to 10 with a bolt, 11 from a dart, and that's just enough. Okay, Grosowski at 211 off the lightning bolt. Here's an attack for three. Grosowski to eight. Eight, by my estimation, less than 10. Yeah, Shrine of Burning Ridge looking pretty powerful here. We're seeing just what this powerful artifact can do. Yep, there's the Shrine, and just a hand of lands. Grosowski picks him up. Zan Sayed. 2-1 with his interesting take 